I'm Marty Stauffer. Why is it that animals with unusual markings seem to hold special significance for us? We're fascinated by the jaguar's spots, the skunk's stripes, and the raccoon's mask and ring tail. Maybe it's because these characteristic markings enable us to identify them easier. And they even add an extra dimension to their personalities. Most of us recognize a raccoon when we see one. And because of its strange markings, most of us think of it as fun-loving or even mischievous. But what about the raccoon's relatives, the nosy Kawadimundi, which looks like a stretched out version of a raccoon? And the graceful little ringtail, it looks like a cross between a squirrel and a fox. These creatures are all closely related, and all of them are known for their distinctive markings. But the question is, are they all ring-tailed rascals? If curiosity is a measure of intelligence, the raccoon must be among the smartest of wild animals. But the raccoon's insatiable curiosity and its appetite often lead to trouble. Its skull and teeth classify the raccoon as a carnivore, but it's omnivorous and will eat almost anything it can get its paws on. The raccoon finds much of its food in the water, but the female Canada goose senses that this male raccoon would be just as happy to enjoy a meal on land. His casual attitude does not hide the fact that eggs and even young hatchlings are a favorite treat. This masked bandit knows exactly what he's after and is bold enough to risk the consequences. An adult raccoon can be a fierce fighter and has few enemies besides man. But this one, though persistent, seems to know that he's the intruder and no match for a pair of geese defending their nest. Perhaps another measure of intelligence is adaptability. Evidence of the raccoons adapting can be seen in the fact that they are found in every one of the lower 48 states and from Canada down into Central America. This adaptability begins with diet. Near New York City on Long Island, this one makes a meal of mussels. It might also raid a nearby hen house and nibble in the farmer's orchard for dessert. The raccoon's diet varies with region and season. From crayfish and insects to acorns and berries, it eats whatever it can gather or whatever it can catch. Unlike other mammals, the raccoon's most highly developed sense is that of touch. It often depends on its almost human hands to locate its food. But it is a carnivore. A hollow tree is its favorite den, and this cottontail rabbit is unlucky enough to be caught in the wrong place.
In southeastern states, such as Florida and Georgia, alligator and turtle eggs are frequently an easy meal. Adult alligators spend the night in the water to hunt and to maintain their cold-blooded bodies at a constant temperature. This means that the female must leave her eggs unguarded during the hours when raccoons are most active. Just as the raccoon is a hunter, so it in turn becomes the hunted. Coon hunting with hounds is a popular sport for more than a million people all across the country. Yet the raccoon population seems to be stable. I miss these are all class winning dogs. This will be short the best of breed. Class winning male back. Almost any dog will chase a raccoon, but several breeds, like black and tan, red bone and blue tick are raised especially for their keen sense of smell, their baying voice, and their stamina on the trail. Like other forms of hunting, the coon chase is now regulated by laws which differ widely in their success at protecting the raccoon. Increasingly, the object of the hunt is no longer the kill, but the excitement and thrill of the chase. The most severe test of adaptability for any wild creature is its ability to accommodate the increasing pressures of civilization. At this, the raccoon excels. In some places, it can be a nuisance. <laughs> Cut down the woods to build a home, and you may find one taking up residence in your chimney. Pave over a cornfield, and one may steal the cherry pie cooling on your windowsill. Even covered trash cans, unless the lids are tied down tightly, are no match for the prying fingers of these nosy rascals. If the raccoon is nosy, you might expect its cousin, the Kawadi Mundi, with its prominent pig-like snout, to be even more inquisitive. In North America, the Coati's habitat had been limited to the rocky grasslands and brushy woods of southern Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. But due to the destruction of predators, in recent years, the Coati has slowly extended its range north and east.
Among this animal's most recognizable features are its long, faintly ringed tail and its tough, sensitive snout. The nose functions much as do the raccoon's front paws, that is, for getting into everything. With it, the coati gets to know its relatives and grubs for roots and insects, fruits and lizards, even an occasional turtle. The coati is also the only truly social member of the raccoon family and usually travels in gregarious, noisy groups of 10 or more individuals of all ages. During the breeding season, the strongest male drives off rivals from his group and enjoys the harem to himself. Each female goes off alone to bear her litter of from four to six young, rejoining the group when the babies are about five weeks of age and old enough to travel. The babies look cuddly and clownish, but an adult coati is, like the raccoon, a tough and scrappy fighter. The mother coati has much to teach her babies. might take a bit of practice in shallow pools like this one before the babies are as proficient swimmers as their parents. Sometimes the long way around really is the easiest. The rocky gullies and canyons of our southwestern states are home to what I consider the most attractive member of the raccoon family, the little ringtail. With its large, bright eyes and pointed fox-like face, it ranges from Mexico northward through California to Oregon, and eastward through Texas as far as Louisiana and Missouri. Though not uncommon throughout this area, it's extremely shy nocturnal, and therefore rarely seen. Much smaller than the raccoon or coati, the ringtail waits until owls and other predators have eaten their fill, then it ventures out during the late night hours to hunt. In some areas, the territories of ringtails and raccoons overlap. Since the ringtail is just as omnivorous as the raccoon, they may even compete for food. Worse, the raccoon may attempt to prey on young ringtails. But though the ringtail is much smaller and more timid than the raccoon, when its young are threatened, it stands its ground.
The ringtail feeds on such things as lizards, toads, fruit, insects, even bats. It especially loves figs and dates, but mice are the staple item in its diet. Pound for pound, it's probably a better mouser than most cats. During the gold rush days, miners often kept ringtails around as pets, for company, but especially to rid their camps of rats and mice. One of the ringtail's common names is miner's cat. Among its enemies is the swift fox, which also enjoys mice, but would just as soon dine on a ringtail or its young. But some families are lucky enough to have a larger cousin happen along for the rescue. Actually, the raccoon simply considers the fox an intruder and a competitor. Though the raccoon would not normally attack the fox with the intention of eating it, as the true ring-tailed rascal of the family, he seems to enjoy chasing it for fun. It's as if these two are playing a game for their wide-eyed audience. In our eastern states, as summer turns to autumn, and autumn gives way to winter, a raccoon's instincts turn to a different kind of game, the mating season. But as is often the case, too much curiosity makes it hard to pay attention to the business at hand. A younger male senses that he might have a chance. Male raccoons are promiscuous, breeding with as many females as they find receptive. The female, on the other hand, will mate with only the one male that she finds acceptable. At first it seems that neither the young male's rival 
nor the object of his attentions will take him very seriously. But battle is often part of nature's mating game. Perhaps it's even the stimulation needed by the male in order to mate. And sooner or later, the weaker rival will be driven off. The mating season begins as early as January in the south and as late as March in the north. When the female has accepted her mate, they will stay together for up to a week, feeding, sleeping, and mating frequently. Afterwards, the male moves on to find other receptive females, while this one settles down to await the arrival of her litter. Young, usually two to seven of them, are born fully furred, complete with black mask and tail rings. Right from birth, their curiosity makes them a new generation of mischief makers. I suspect that most of us would like to get to know wild animals better. But the more we get to know them, the more we see how different they are. Different from each other, and different from our first notions about them. The raccoon is a masked bandit, but also works hard for a living. The Kawadi Mundi is a funny looking clown, but also an elegant swimmer. The ringtail is a recluse, but one with strong family ties. Another fascinating aspect of the raccoon and its relatives is the way each member combines the curious traits of other animals, cat, bear, fox, and even monkey. Perhaps in them, we see a reminder of ourselves, and the joke is on us, which is why I like to call them ring-tailed rascals. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.